Dear friends, good morning and happy feast day. Today we are celebrating the solemnity of the Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit upon Mary and the Apostles. And uh, today we celebrate also 50 days after Easter. And this is the last day of Easter. Kaya nga maririnig ninyo uh, pagkatapos ng Misa, kung uh, mag attend kayo, or the liturgical services, they end with, thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. The last day of Easter. And tomorrow, we begin once again with, the, or we continue, ordinary time. And uh, however, it's a, a special day tomorrow. It is the, the feast of uh, Mary, Mother of the Church, which we will discuss uh, tomorrow. But uh, today is, uh, we, is the Feast of the Pentecost. And uh, we take our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And I read from the text. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise, like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. You know, dear friends, today we, we uh, remember especially the Holy Spirit and uh, this morning when uh, we went for breakfast, our community somehow received the, uh, quote-unquote, no? received gifts. Uh, as is uh, customary in Salesian houses, uh, we pick out a gift of the Holy Spirit. And uh, most of the time, no, it's what we really need. And uh, today, no, with the creativity of uh, Brother Jonas, no, we had these uh, different uh, cards bearing the gift of the Spirit that uh, we picked, and uh, I picked especially, or particularly this uh, gift, uh, fortitude, something that I need especially, maybe in these trying times, the faith that I would uh, need in order to withstand whatever problems we have. And uh, I'd like to give a bit of a reflection about this uh, reading that we've had from the Acts of the Apostles. You know, uh, today is the last day of May, May 31, the last day of the month of Mary. At the same time, if this were an ordinary day, uh, it would be the Feast of the Visitation. But I'd like to reflect something about uh, this, um, this reading that we've had about Mary's presence there. So Mary's presence at the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost is known by many, not only through the reading of scriptures, but we hear this very often, when we pray the Holy Rosary, the one leading the Rosary usually announces, the third glorious mystery is the descent of the Holy Spirit upon Mary and the Apostles. And here in the book of Acts, the presence of Mary is proclaimed in a short, albeit important, transition statement. You know, Acts continues the story of the Gospel of Luke. It has the same author. In this book, Luke refers to his earlier work that reviewed the activities of Jesus. He underscores the order of Jesus to his apostles not to depart from Jerusalem and to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. That's uh, what we find in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. So the apostles witness the ascension of Jesus, who tells them, that they will receive power with the coming of the Holy Spirit. And having done so, they would be witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That's what we find in Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 8. After the ascension, the apostles returned to the upper room in Jerusalem. And we see that still in the first chapter of Acts and also in Luke, that reference to the upper room. Now, it was the time to choose a replacement for Judas after that. So there were two proposed candidates, Barsabbas and Matthias. And lots were cast, and the lot fell on Matthias. We know that. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Now, 
That was what happened because, before this Pentecost scene. Within that pre-Pentecost narrative that makes up the first chapter of Luke, we find the verse that proclaims Mary's presence. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. That is Acts chapter 1, verse 14. So together with Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James, together with the women who were previously mentioned in the Lucan Gospel, the women who were there during his ministry, his passion, his burial, uh, passion and burial and resurrection of Jesus, and together with Jesus' brothers, was Mary his mother. And all these were united in a place in Jerusalem in the upper room. And they were together with one accord in prayer. And here I'd just like to focus on that. The presence of Mary in the church. There at the beginning. Yung isa sa mga sinasabi ng pari ngayon, no? which uh, you might uh, have heard no? during the, the homilies, even online, is uh, happy birthday to everybody. Happy birthday to the church. This is the day the church was born. And rightly so. And I'd like to emphasize the fact that at the day of the birth of the church, there is Mary. Kasama natin palagi siya. Kaya it's so meaningful that the day after Pentecost, we celebrate that feast of Mary, mother of the church, which is a recent one, which I'll deal with uh, in my good morning talk tomorrow. Suffice to say that this is a great feast. This is a wonderful feast for all of us. And uh, you might have uh, also prayed the sequence before the gospel of the day. But there's another prayer that is usually sung or prayed at the beginning of evening prayer and other parts of the liturgy. And I'd like to, uh, to pray this together with you as our final prayer. And let us sing it in Gregorian chant. This is Veni Creator Spiritus. And before I uh, go to uh, singing this in Gregorian chant, here is the meaning of uh, Veni Creator Spiritus. Come Holy Spirit, Creator, come from thy bright heavenly throne. Come take possession of our souls and make them all thy own. Thou who art called the paraclete, best gift of God above, the living spring, the living fire, sweet unction and true love. Thou who art sevenfold in thy grace, finger of God's right hand, his promise teaching little ones to speak and understand. O guide our mind with thy blessed light, with love our hearts in flame, and with thy strength which never decays, confirm our mortal frame. Far from us drive our deadly foe, true peace unto us bring, and through all perils lead us safe beneath thy sacred wing. Through thee may we the Father know, through thee the eternal Son, and thee the Spirit of them both, thrice blessed three in one. All glory to the Father be, with his co-equal Son, the same to thee, great Paraclete, while endless ages run. And with this now we end it by praying, singing the Veni Creator. Veni Creator Spiritus, mentes suorum visita, imple superna gratia, que tu creasti pectora. Quidiceris paraclitus, Altissimi donum Dei, fons vivus in his caritas, et spiritalis suncio. Tu septi formis munere, digitus paterne dextere, tu rite promisum patris, Sermone dita hans gutura, 
Accende lumen sensibus, in fundia morem cordibus, in firma nostri corporis, virtute firma hans perpeti. Ostem repelas longius, pacemque dones protinus, Doctorore sic te previo, vitemus omne noxium. Per te sciamus da patrem, nos camus atque filium, teque utriusque spiritum, credamus omni tempore. Deo Patricit Gloria, et Filio quia mortuis, surexit ac paractito, in seculorum secula. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, greetings of a happy feast day. Have a good Pentecost Sunday. God bless you.